Sal, it's a pleasure to welcome you back. It's great to be here. Um, I think uh, there are very few kids around the world who haven't heard about Khan Academy. You're actually more famous now than the actual Salman Khan from Bollywood. Uh, that so might be an overstatement, <laughs> but yes. <laughs> Uh, but, uh, <laughs> you know, um, uh, beyond the uh, boundaries of our uh, country, which is U.S., uh, you're growing internationally pretty much. Uh, you know, last time I think uh, I was talking to somebody else who uses it pretty frequently that, you know, it's about 60-plus countries now and leveraging this opportunity. Uh, what did your take on how this is growing beyond the borders of U.S.? Yeah, you know, our, our, our mission as an organization is a free world-class education for anyone, anywhere. Uh, but, you know, the last many years, our primary focus to a large degree has been the English-speaking world. That's kind of where, our, where we started. Uh, but if we really want to fulfill that mission, we have to do the rest of the world. And so we're thinking very seriously about how do we localize our content. And when I say that, it's not just translating videos or redoing videos. It's the software, it's teacher tools. And also, how do we programmatize it in it, different areas so that the students who need it most actually get it? So we really care about the world's major languages, many of which are in India. Right. And India is obviously a part where you know my family comes from, all of us come from. Uh, and so it's, it's, it's always been in the back of our minds, as, you know, as, as valuable as this might be in the West, think of what it could do in a place like India. And so uh, we are very seriously uh, exploring what we can do in India, and we're looking for people to, to help us out, uh, to help us out in terms of uh, volunteers, to help us out in terms of support and on-the-ground work. Uh, but, yeah, we have a whole effort going, and anyone who's interested should email india at khanacademy.org. You know, this is the biggest equalizer that's come out in, in the last so many decades. Um, the challenge there is, you know, uh, people who have no means to go to school, obviously have no means to study any language. How are you then localizing beyond the language? Uh, I mean, do you actually need people who have the language skills to interpret that? Or do you, are you tr trying to bring those students who don't have English, basic English skills to learn English and then come to uh, the academy? Yeah, I mean, these are, that's a, a really good point. I, I, part of it is learn it in your language, because that's where you're starting and, and get the basics. Uh, we haven't addressed it yet, but we could imagine at some point, especially if you're in the higher level math or science, that English tends to be the kind of lingua franca okay. there. And so um, maybe you can transition people. Uh, but yeah, it's still an open question. I think, you know, we understand the, the context in a place like the US well. We're starting to work with partners in places like Brazil and understanding that context well. Uh, I think if you think it about India or the Indian subcontinent, uh, it's going to have a other kind of dynamics. What, not beyond just how do you create the content so it's, it's, it connects with sensibilities there, but also what is the content that people need? Yes, it's great to learn algebra and physics and biology, but yes, maybe you need other skills as well that are more relevant in, in that part of the world. So it's, it's going to be, you know, I, I won't pretend like we're just going to solve it overnight, uh, but I, I think in the next five, ten years, uh, and not just us, us in conjunction with other groups, have a chance of really making a dent in a place like India. You know, devices are, are, are getting exponentially cheaper. Um, we're, the content is going to be out there. We can part, there's a lot of great NGOs that we can partner with that can help distribute it. Uh, so yeah, I, I imagine in, in ten years things are going to look quite different in a, in a positive way. You know, John Doerr recently mentioned there's a trillion dollar industry online education. A lot more people are coming back. They started 10 years ago, didn't see much traction, but now a lot of more money is pouring in. And you are competing head on, but you're far ahead. Uh, how do you see yourself uh, against you know, these other business models, which are money based? Yeah, we're strange, you know, as a not-for-profit, and a lot of people don't, you know, Silicon Valley don't even know what a not-for-profit is, really. You know, no one owns Khan Academy. And, any, and we give stuff away, we're philanthropically supported, but if we do have revenue, it's all for the mission. It, it, and we pay salaries, obviously, but there's no, there's no stock. And to some degree, we've played a role in kind of the, the renaissance. Of, right. uh, because, yeah, people said, okay, what's going on? You know, uh, education is a space where there's been market failure. And my point of view, I, you know, my old work I used to be in the for-profit industry. Right. And I think for-profit can do a, a lot of good, but there's some areas of society that have market failure, where the markets aren't operating correctly. Education is one of them. Healthcare is, is famously the other one. And that's where the NGO sector is very valuable, and that's why we chose to be an NGO, because it's, it's not obvious that the market dynamics would lead to the outcomes that are actually going to be better for, for users and, and better for learners. Um, so, and, and to some degree, us coming out there and getting to scale has shown, well, there is an interest, there is demand here. And so there has been a renaissance. I think the business models, um, I'm not sure. I'm not, you know, our business model is uh, philanthropically supported and we do corporate sponsorships and things like that uh, 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 to just fulfill the mission. I, I think, 
you know, as a for-profit, it's, it's unclear right now what, what would, I'm guessing some will emerge, uh, but I think there's much more of kind of a, uh, the, the industry, it's true, it's a trillion dollar industry, but, you know, I think things like publishing is, are going to be very difficult because in the past you would charge someone $200 to have, right. you know, on printed paper material that essentially Isaac Newton came up with 400 years ago, uh, that's all going to be available for free now. Uh, it's going to be better. It's going to be richer. You're going to have videos, exercises, community. Uh, and this is going to be true in every domain uh, that you care about. So that's going to be harder. And, 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 and the beauty is people are giving it away for free because it should be given away for free. So um, I think there's going to be niches that, that form, but it's still early. Finally, how do you maintain the momentum of, of your uh, business model? Because uh, pretty soon, you know, uh, there's going to be a lot more players in the market. Uh, you have this great support, right, from Bill Gates down to other people. I'm trying to learn, you know, how do we not dilute this because there's so much valued by a lot of people around the world. Well, you know, we, we don't rest on our laurels or become complacent just saying, oh, we're not for profit, we're good. You know, it's, it really is about us making sure that we are always um, s truly serving student needs that when students think of Khan Academy, they say, hey, this is where I'm going to get the best explanation. This is where I'm going to get the best practice problems. This is going to be great software. This is going to be very usable. I'm going to connect with it. So in that way, we are very, um, you know, we're, we're always saying, what, what do we need to do to race forward? And, you know, the team at Khan Academy, it's much more than me. We've been able to attract, frankly, some of the, the very top people in, 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 in the industry, uh, which shows that if you give people a, a solid mission, you can attract, you know, the, the guy who wrote jQuery is on our team, Google's first employee. Craig Silverstein is, is on our team. And so you have these kind of uh, very skilled and very passionate folks, uh, and hopefully we can work together to, to, to make sure that the, the, the thing that we're giving away for free is also the very best thing. All right. Wishing you all the best again. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.